Hello you beautiful people, welcome back to Living Abroad. In this video, I have a weekly news recap for you guys. Some of the top stories from around the Philippines and neighboring countries. If you want to see daily up-to-date news, check out my brand new channel, Asia Now. I'm working my way to a thousand subscribers so I can monetize that channel too. Of course, the more resources I have, the more things I can do. On this channel alone, I got in-depth interviews, street interviews, food stuff, you know, travel stuff, a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm all in. So if you guys are enjoying this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into this week's top news. In this video, I will tell you about some alleged Chinese gang members being arrested in the Philippines. Korean nationals get into a shootout with Filipino police. A man who got a tattoo for 100,000 pesos just to find out it was all a prank from a business. A man who broke into his neighbor's house thinking that he saw ghosts. An earthquake in Surigao del Sur. April Fool's prank man with a tattoo on his forehead gets redemption, finally. Mayor of Cebu is declaring a water crisis. A Filipino man, 46 years old, trying to set fire to a university. A, a venomous snake in a classroom. Two barangay officials uh, were caught in a hotel room having a meeting. Four Chinese nationals, one gang leader, and three of his men were arrested in the Philippines for carrying fake IDs. Now here's the thing, the IDs were authentic and real, however the people were not Filipino and the Bureau of Immigration has gotten a hold of them and arrested them. They were arrested during Holy Week in the Barangay San Pedro in Puerto Princesa. They had with them several issued IDs such as uh, driver licenses, postal IDs, and birth certificates. Liu, who's the alias for Ken Garcia Lee, allegedly heads a local syndicate providing the documents to undesirable aliens and trafficking victims. Essentially, what these Chinese men have been doing is posing as real Filipinos, which allows them to buy property and do all kinds of illegal activity to the point of even affecting politics. So I'll leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this particular story. Next, we have a shootout with Korean nationals and the Filipino police. Korean national who allegedly robbed fellow Korean dies in a shootout with the police and two others are arrested. A Korean national while his two other companions were arrested following a shootout with the police who responded to a robbery for another Korean national inside the Maria Luisa subdivision around 9.30 p.m. on Tuesday. The deceased was identified as Sun Young Choi, 47, from South Korea, while those who fell to the authorities were Young Hee Kim, 45, and Jun Yi Kim, 49. The suspects barged into the house of a 43-year-old businesswoman from Korea who was with her two Filipina housemaids. This happened in Cebu, so the Mabola police responded and ordered the suspect to quickly surrender. But the latter opened fire, which led a shootout that injured the police staff sergeant and killed one of the suspects. The wounded cop was rushed to a local hospital, which he's said to be in critical condition for suffering multiple gunshot wounds. The police recovered 200,000 peso cash and over 25 million peso worth of jewelry. This is still a developing story and I'll keep you guys posted when I hear some more news. A man by the name of Emil Albano got a tattoo of a business on his forehead. Now this local business tapioca basically was offering anybody that can get their logo of their business tattooed on their forehead 100,000 pesos in a post. However, if you clicked on that photo, the details would tell you April Fool's like a joke or whatever, but one man went ahead and did this, sent them a message saying, hey, I got this tattooed on my forehead. I'm the first one to do it. Give me my money. In which case, the business replied saying, oh, no, no, we are not responsible. This was April Fool's. I'm going to read you what the response was, and I'll tell you a lot more about this story that went viral. I want to know your thoughts about this story. First off, the name of the business is Taragis in Papanga. It's a takayaki food brand. Now, this is what the store said in a response on a Facebook after getting a lot of heat from locals saying, hey, man, you should pay up. You put this out there. This guy, this man got a tattoo on his forehead. Give him 100,000 pesos. And this is the store's response. I quote, let this serve as a reminder to us all how important reading comprehension is. It's April Fool's Day. Never trust anything or anyone. The same as any other day. Once more, Targis Takayaki is not accountable for the events that occurred. Thank you, the food brand said in a now deleted post. I don't like the tone of that message. Personally, I think it's shameful. I mean, as a business, I understand 100,000 pesos is a lot of money. However, can you imagine the amount of damage it's gonna cost to your brand, to your name, the amount of backlash you're gonna get from the local community, and why not do the right thing? Here's the thing. Reading comprehension is not equal across the board, especially in the Philippines, a developing country where there are many areas where accessing proper education isn't as easy as one might think. Not only that, let us be fair that it's only $2,000 for a business. 
I get that's a lot of money, but consider it as advertising. Speaking of advertising, since then, many, many, I was gonna go through all the names, but there's too many to go through. A lot of other stores, a lot of other brands have gone ahead and offered this man 10,000 pesos, 15,000 pesos, 20,000 pesos, cell phones, TVs, air fryers, uh, food, forever makeup, not makeup, forever haircuts, I can go on and on and on. So doing their part to make this person feel a lot better. Or is that just a market employee by these brands knowing that uh, 10,000 pesos will get them a lot of, uh, you know, eyes on them, a lot of, of course, coverage, a lot of exposure. Let me know in the comment section. I want to know, first of all, what do you think of the man that tattooed himself on the forehead? What do you think of the business that denied giving him the 100,000 pesos? And lastly, what do you think of all those businesses offering to help this man with some money? Do you think it's from the kindness of their heart? Do you think it's like a marketing ploy or a mixture of both? I'd love to know in the comment section. Yesterday, I covered a story about a Filipino man who got a business name tattooed on his forehead in hopes of winning 100,000 pesos in a competition, which then the business announced that it was all April Fool's joke. But uh, amidst heavy backlash from social media users, Filipinos came together and supported this man who got so much more money than the 100,000. And so anyways, long story short, the man has now been given the 100,000 by the business owner. I think he realized his mistake to not have the whole Philippines against him. So he's given the 100,000 pesos to the man who has the business name tattooed on his forehead. A man is in heat for being arrested after breaking and entering into his neighbor's house, claiming he saw some ghosts. He even said he saw the ghost of Saddam Hussein. Here are some more details. A man was taken into custody after he broke into his neighbor's home after seeing four ghosts. The incident occurred past midnight on Monday. The suspect was identified as Lubrencio Sabarana, 38 years old. The man said that he quickly scaled the fence and went into his neighbor's house to inform the people living there his findings after witnessing the ghost entering. He also claimed they recognized Saddam as one of the ghosts. I don't know what to make of that story. I know I'll be terrified if my neighbor broke into my house telling me that he saw the ghost of Saddam Hussein or any ghost to be honest, even Casper the friendly ghost. Next, a magnitude 5 earthquake hits Surigao del Sur. The earthquake happened around 24 kilometers northeast of Lingig town at 5.16 a.m. It was 28 kilometers deep and was tectonic in origin. Officials said they're not expecting any aftershocks, but they're expecting some damage. A slight uproar on social media with Filipinos after witnessing a video showing a police vehicle being parked in bike lanes. This vehicle sporting a red plate blocks the bike lane at the approach to Cologne Bridge. The acronym BPSO, which stands for Barangay Police Security Officer, is prominently marked on the sides and the back of the vehicle. Aren't they supposed to help enforce parking laws? Filipinos had a field day with this one on social media. Many of them kind of uh, making jokes or, or like uh, talking about the hypocrisy, right? So a lot of people actually shared their own photos that they took of uh, public vehicles being parked in an area they shouldn't be parking in. Um, yeah, I guess you have to lead by example, but who knows what the backstory is, whether it was an emergency, whether the car broke down, but of course optics does not look good. In travel news, Naya International Airport reported over 1 million passengers during Holy Week. Of course, that many people traveling to the airport led to some minor incidences, especially when it came to electrical power. I quote, following an evaluation by the terminal engineering team, it was determined that the terminal circuit breaker kept tripping due to high power lows caused by the elevated heat index outside the terminal. Yeah, that too, of course, the heat does not help right now. They need the AC blasting, cold air, and something that uh, is just gonna happen sometimes in Naya International Airport. Next, we have over 770 people being arrested across the Philippines, majority being from the Visayas for gambling, illegal gambling, ranging from cockfighting to cards, to coin tossing, all kinds of illegal activities during Holy Week. I quote, the menace of illegal gambling should be addressed with strong and consistent measure by the police and partnership with the community, and thus it should be our collective endeavor to eradicate illegal gambling in Visayas. I wanna know your thoughts about gambling. Um, I'm curious about what the difference is between illegal gambling or legal gambling. Um, trying to figure out whether it's for safety, whether to have, because um, I used to work in a gambling industry myself, uh, I used to work at a casino, so I'm very curious to see uh, what the reasoning is from the Filipinos. I'm, I'm not a Filipino, I don't know if it's a religious thing, whether it's to try to make sure that people don't overspend. I've never been to a casino, actually I did go to a casino in the Philippines, but I don't know enough about it. Maybe you guys could tell me in the comment section what separates the legal against illegal, right? Is it just corporations trying to make money? Is it for tax reasons? 
I'm very curious, I'm sure I could Google it, but I'd love to hear from a local person instead of some guy writing on Google. Cebu City Mayor has declared a state of water crisis in the city after the city council declared 28 mountain barangays under a state of calamity due to the ill effects of the El Nino phenomenon. Cracks on the ground are already visible while crops have died due to the intense heat. Residents of these areas are also lining up for water rations from water trucks provided by the city. Crimes in Central Versailles have dropped by 51% from March 25th to 31st, 2024, compared to the same period last year. The police disclosed some data indicating a decrease in cases to 42 from 86. So this year 42, last year 86 in the same period of time. For more quick news, the Philippines is one of the fastest growing economies in Southeast Asia. The World Bank on Monday retained a 2024 Philippines economic growth forecast at 5.8% and expects the country to be the second fastest growing economy in Southeast Asia and the Pacific. The World Bank report showed that the Philippines and Cambodia will be the second highest growing economy in Southeast Asia and the Pacific. Number one is Palau. I don't even know what Palau is. Let me look on Google Maps. Honestly, that's the first time I've heard of such country Palau. Apparently, it's an archipelago of over 500 islands. I had no clue. Uh, I guess I'm learning something every day along with you guys. A Filipino man, 46 years old, trying to set fire to a university. A 46-year-old man was arrested by a security guard for setting a fire on a fence for University of San Jose Ricolitos in Cebu City around 6 a.m. Thursday, April 4th. Arrested was Alejandro Bernardo Langi of Toledo City. He'll be facing a case of attempted arson. Not a small charge. I wonder what prompted him to do that. Next, a woman perishes after jumping off a bus in the city of Naga. A woman passed away after she jumped out of a passenger bus after the brakes failed and her body hit a tree. Police have identified the victim as Andrea Manainai of Toledo City, Midwest Cebu. The incident occurred around 3.45 a.m. on Thursday, April 4th. According to the driver, Gabe, the bus was driving from Toledo to Cebu City at 3.45 a.m. when the brakes failed. He had to slam the bus against concrete barriers until it stopped. However, one of the passengers had leaped from the bus in terror and struck her body on a tree, resulting in her passing away, and three others were also injured. The man is being held right now at a police station for questioning and uh, reckless driving causing homicide. Yeah, because I was curious. Uh, brakes don't just fail usually. There's all these things in place for that not to happen but I don't know I'm not a technician or a mechanic I don't want to presume but I'll definitely be looking further into this 3 45 a.m. would be a time that I personally have fallen asleep many times driving so hopefully that did not happen in this case but that's just an assumption by me but let's see what happens with facts coming out later next April 10th has been declared a regular holiday in the Philippines to celebrate Eid El Fitr which is like the celebrations of the end of Ramadan because that's when the fasting is over and Muslims all, all around the world celebrate. I mean, uh, don't tell anybody, but I did not fast this year. I haven't fasted since I was a kid. Uh, so much respect to those that can go from sunrise to sunset without eating or drinking or cursing or, you know, it takes a lot of discipline to do that. So big respect to whoever fasted this month and hopefully you enjoy that big feast because uh, I'm here by myself. I mean, I don't deserve it anyways, I guess, because I didn't fast. In more sad news, a taxi driver in the Philippines has passed away after he was struck by a truck while he was washing his car. Apparently, the taxi driver was washing his car on the side of the road when a truck driver who claims his steering wheel got stuck and he could not steer away in time, uh, resulting in unfortunately hitting this person who passed away. And some interesting news in Lapu Lapu City uh, that involves donated land and new homes being built for those that need it. Here are the details. Around 200 Open Ganan families who are informal settlers will have the chance to own a home as they'll be the first recipients of the upcoming socialized housing project of Lapu Lapu City government this year. On Thursday, April 4th, the mayor said that Chan received the almost two hectare lot donation in Barangay Kalawisan from John Dorf Ventures Corporation, a real estate developer, the lot will be used for the city-funded socialized housing program. They said that they will prioritize these settlers who are living coastal villages, adding that there will be around 200 units in five-story condos by building, which will be built and donated to. The mayor said that the groundbreaking for the project may start this year as funding has been allocated. The next steps he added are the biding and awarding of the contractor. Call me a cynic, but I just, I find it hard to believe someone donating that much land. I mean, bless their heart if it's genuine, but I wonder if there are any like tax 
kickbacks, legal, all these other behind the scenes things going on uh, because I, I would love to see the details behind this project of uh, why somebody would donate that much land for free. But good for the families that are getting free homes or at least discounted homes. We have to wait to see the details. Next up, a venomous snake in a classroom. A venomous Philippines cobra or Naha was spotted in a classroom in the city of Quezon province. The students Classes were dismissed early before the snake entered the classroom. Yeah, I'll be gone too. If I was a kid, a student, I would not care. If it's between a snake or an ass whooping, I'll take the ass whooping any day. But here's a juicy story. Two Constellacion barangay officials uh, were caught in a hotel room having a meeting. A meeting between a barangay counselor and a 22-year-old chairperson inside a motel around 8.30 p.m. in barangay Lapu-Lapu City was interrupted upon the arrival of the barangay counselor's wife and the police. So they were released from the police station after the, an interview resulting in them uh, not being found guilty of having sex, which is a prerequisite before they can file any charges. Uh, yeah, a pretty late meeting in a weird location, if you ask me, but what do I know? In some quick news, a Senate minority leader praised the UAE, United Arab Emirates, or Dubai, if you want to know that way, has praised the government because now it seemed like less reported case of runaway maids, which means by statistically speaking, they've improved the work conditions for the OFWs in Dubai or UAE. Next, a government worker from China was seen in a video going to her colleague's desk and attempting to add a powder-like substance in the latter's drink. The pregnant woman reported her colleagues to the police. This was because they think the woman allegedly poisoned her colleague to, pre to prevent her from going on maternity leave. Can you believe you don't want your coworker to go on maternity leave? So they're gonna poison her drink? Whoa, crazy if true. Back to the Philippines, Region 3 in Central Luzon has recorded the most pregnancies, more than 400 involving adolescents below 15 years old, based on a 2022 civil registry and vital statistics data. A lot of youngins getting pregnant in that region. Next up in Taiwan, a massive earthquake. Uh, latest I've heard is four people have passed away and one missing right now. A powerful earthquake rocked the entire island of Taiwan early Wednesday, collapsing buildings in southern city and creating tsunami that washed ashore on southern Japanese islands. There was a tsunami warning issued in the Philippines coastal areas fronting the Pacific Ocean after a magnitude 7.5 earthquake struck Taiwan. However, that's been removed now. The tsunami warning no longer uh, is in place. My prayers go out to those people affected by that earthquake. And that's the thing about these beautiful places, Taiwan, Philippines, uh, Thailand, not so much, but all these areas where Japan, of course, earthquakes and tsunamis are a common thing when tectonic plates are shifting and earthquakes are happening. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful place to live, but sometimes you're reminded how fragile we are as human beings. And uh, life is short, so I'm not here to tell you how to live your life, but just uh, to be aware that things like this happen, unfortunately, and to enjoy every single day. Uh, there was a Russian tourist in, in Thailand that basically got caught on CCTV camera, uh, pretended to pay the bill, but never actually paid it. And then he made this whole fuss. Eventually, the store owner went ahead and checked the CCTV cameras. And, and then, yeah, the, the Russian tourist had no way of lying about that. So they forced the guy to stand in front of the building in the restaurant, uh, issue an apology and pay the bill. So yeah, another misbehaving, a lot of misbehaving foreigners and tourists in this video. I don't want to always make it negative, but these are the top stories from around the Philippines and neighboring countries. In some Thailand Bangkok news, uh, panicked passengers jump into a sea to escape a raging ferry fire in the Gulf of Thailand early Thursday. And 108 people on board were safe, luckily. The overnight ferry from Suratani province was about to arrive in Koh Tao, a popular tourist destination off the Thai coast when one of the passengers suddenly heard a crackling sound and smelled smoke. <sighs> oh, they escaped the blaze. In Taiwan, Globe, uh, the telecommunication company from the Philippines offered free roaming for those Filipinos in Taiwan uh, after that earthquake. So good for them, Globe doing something good for the Filipinos abroad. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what do you think of some of these top stories from around the Philippines. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you want to see daily content, check out Asia Now. It's in the link in the description down below and in the comment section. Just click that subscribe button. It only takes a second, but helps me to make more videos, motivates me, shows me you guys are enjoying this. And of course, it allows me to travel more, do more things, and bring much more content to you guys. I'm running out of breath. And I'll see you guys in our regularly regular videos about interviews and travel in the next video. Bye.